To set that up then, we're gonna first set up the items for our new rental revenue stream. So when we set up the items, these are gonna be the things that we sell when we populate the invoice and the estimate. So we're imagining now that if someone comes in and they, and they call in, for example, and they say they want to rent like band equipment for a weekend or something like that, we wanna make it as easy as possible for anybody that is on the phone to give them an estimate, possibly take a deposit at that point in time. To do that, we wanna make, want make the items to, to populate the estimate as easy as possible. So let's go down to where those are located. Let's go to the sales tab. Let's go to the products and services, product service items. And then I'm gonna close up the hand boogie. If you're in the uh, business view, by the way, it's under the get paid and pay tab on the left. And then we've got the product and service items. So I'm gonna put this down. So, so now you might say, well, I can just create like a rental item for like every guitar. So we've got multiple guitars down here and we might have amplifiers and drum sets and whatnot. And we'll create a, a rental kind of cost for each of those. And you could do that in like a piecemeal type of, of scenario and, and let them have a lot more customization over the equipment that they're going to be purchasing. But obviously that'll be a lot more difficult in terms of coming up with a someone over the phone trying to come up with like an estimate and collect the deposit. It might be easier oftentimes if you're in a situation like this to come up with a package bundle as your baseline bundle. This is the bare minimum. You can't pay us less rental than this. You can't basically rent out one drumstick or anything like that because it's not worth our time to do that. We're gonna set up the baseline rental and then possibly you can add to it or improve on it from there. So the idea might be, we're gonna give you like two guitars, a drum set, an amplifier, as the baseline bundle with our baseline uh, selection of equipment for that. If you want to level up the guitars or get another guitar, then we piecemeal possibly up from there in some incremental way. So getting your, getting your items right, whatever you're doing, setting up your items right is going to be the key thing. You have a similar issue if you were to have a law firm or a bookkeeping firm or something like that and someone wanted a project that was going to be put together how are you going to do that you just can say well how many hours is it going to take whoever's on the phone has no idea we don't really know the client but if we can if we can bill it out by how many transactions it's going to take do you have payroll or, or not and bundle those kind of things together we can get much more close to some kind of estimate and bill out on something less ambiguous than just say time for example Okay, so I'm gonna add some items here. I'm gonna go up top and say, let's say we're gonna have a new item and it's going to be, we're gonna call it a service item because it's gonna be rental. So we're not actually, even though it's dealing with the inventory, we're not selling the inventory, we're just renting the inventory. And I'm just gonna call the baseline rental, we'll just call it band, I'm gonna call it band set uh, number one rental. So, so we're gonna start to say, hey, we're renting out band set stuff and this is our baseline set that you can possibly level up from, but this is this is the baseline. And so I'm gonna I'm not gonna put it into a category. We could make a category for like rental stuff. Maybe let's do that. Let's let's actually make a category for for rental stuff. And so we'll just to practice with the categories. We'll put that in the band set, and then we'll have the price. And then down here, I'm gonna, let's put a little bit more detail in the description. I'm gonna say this includes two guitars, like one drum set and an amplifier, like for a weekend or something like that, or two days, I don't know, two, how long it would be, two days, I don't know. But <laughs> you wanna be specific on that. Well, that's what I'm gonna put. I'm gonna put 2000 here. I have no idea how much that should actually go for. Uh, so, so we're just doing it for the practice problem. It's going to go into then the account. It's currently going to services, which might be good, but if you have another kind of source of income and we have multiple types of rental, it might justify then another income account for rental income. Remember that you don't want to have too many income accounts. I don't want an income account for every item that I sell, but I might want for example, to have an income account by the major groups of items, inventory or possibly guitars versus drums or rental versus other service items. 
So let's add, let's add a new one. I'm gonna hit the drop down and I'm gonna say I want another income account. I'll break it out. And so we're gonna make an income account as we go, hitting the drop down. I want it to be an income type of account. Uh, this subcategory, other primary income, I'll say. And then I'm just gonna call it equipment. Equipment rental income. Let's call it. No sub account, we'll keep it as is. Let's save it and close it. So there we have it. Shouldn't be any tax applied to it because it's a service item. So uh, tax, let's see if I can go into the tax, edit the tax and say that we want it to be non-tax and then okay. And then, so that looks good. So let's save it and close it. Now, remember if I just go onto the income statement over here that our income accounts, what I'm trying to point out is that the income accounts, you, you don't usually want a whole lot of income statement accounts and you don't usually want to set up an income statement account for every item that you sell or every customer, which is a common error that sometimes people make. Now, sometimes you might deviate from that general rule because if you're in like gig work and you're getting paid by multiple platforms like a YouTube or an Uber or multiple platforms like that, then, and you're just using bank feeds to record your transactions instead of using the invoices and sales receipts, then you might just make an income account called like Google or YouTube or something like that because you're losing some of the added detail that you would have on the sub ledgers to break out your income line items by item and by customer.